where to find it's documented. We'll probably never have heard about the feature. We'll probably not know how to implement the, you know, the DHP server function, you know, and, and so forth. We'll probably have run into a lot of problems. So by giving people tasks that are that are theoretically new to them, you know, they will be able to, you know, differentiate the inexperienced engineer from the experienced engineer. And that's what they're trying to test. And it's hard to do. Hard to test someone's experience. It's easy to test it in an interview most of the time. You're able to interview someone and say, I can realize that this guy's got more hands-on experience than this other guy or this other person. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, from a, a test perspective, it's hard to do it. I mean, how could you test someone's experience on a written test? I mean, you know, written tests, what are written tests? The majority of them are memorization. You know, they're just memorization. They're not really showing how you apply your knowledge or how experienced you are with a particular technology or feature or whatever. All right, so the documentation CD, spend some time on it. Okay, so spend some time on the documentation CD. Don't go into the CCA lab and have to look up something for the first time. You want to know where things are documented in the CCA lab. And that's what I would do, especially on any areas you think you're potentially weak on. If you think you're potentially weak on IP services or system management, well, you better know where that documentation is, and you better know what's documented and how it's documented. Okay, you don't want to go into CCA lab and say, you know, I'm not really good with multicast, and then go, I've never really looked at the multicast documentation. What you want to do is say, you know, unfortunately, you may say, hey, I'm not really good with multicast, but I can read this question and I know what feature they're asking for. I don't, I don't know how to configure that feature off the top of my head, but I know I can go to the documentation and I can grab that feature. Part of that is the CCA lab. That's some of the things they're going to ask you to do is configure something for the first time, something you've never seen before. Okay, and so some people get frustrated by it. They're like, I don't know why they asked me this. The CCA lab isn't real world. No, it's not a real world design lab. It's a, design, it's a test that's designed to test your experience and understanding. Okay, that's an actual quote from Cisco. Test your experience and understanding, you know, not for, you know, not for the implementation of best practices for use in the field. Okay, you know, so, you know, doing that, they're going to ask you a lot of weird stuff. Okay, it's going to see how much you really know. And, and a lot of times that may seem like, you know, a stupid router trick to one person, but to a person that really knows it, they're going, hey, that's a really good question because that's really complicated to do. You know, I'll tell you a really good example. And this is, you'll, pr I, would, I would pretty much guarantee you'll never see this in the CCA lab, but there's an actual feature in OSPF to carry the BGP AS numbers. So you could take BGP, redistribute it into OSPF, and then pass it back out into BGP and then maintain the AS information. And, and it, it, there's an option in OSPF to support that. You know, and you can actually configure that on the routers. Probably see in the lab, no. The people who want those stupid router tricks are going, hey, man, what's that config, Brian? How do you do that? But, you know, and if you read about, you know, the vendor independent perspective, in fact, I was reading one of the books the other day that I'm going to recommend here. I was going over with a new employee and I actually mentioned that. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I knew you could do it on the router, but I never saw it actually documented outside of Cisco. And it was pretty neat. It talked about, you know, what actually was set in the OSPF. Uh, LSAs to mention that this is going to be a tag and this tag was going to maintain the BGPAS information. So you can put it in OSPF and then bring it out of OSPF. It's kind of neat to look at that kind of stuff, you know. But once again, those are stupid router tricks. You won't see that in the CCA lab. You know, now that I say this, some proctor goes in and adds it, right? <laughs> but yeah, we don't even have like that in the workbook. But you know, it's, it's kind of neat to pick up on some of that stuff. But don't focus on that kind of stuff in the beginning. It's neat to do to show off to your buddies you're, you're preparing with, you know, the people you're preparing with, your coworkers, and neat to show them how you can do that. But in reality, you know, from a real world perspective, how many people are going to do that? None. You know, I mean, no one's going to really redistribute OSP, BGP and OSPF and OSPF back into BGP just to maintain their AS path information through their internal network. All right, so, the, but the documentation lists, this kind, lists these kind of examples, but kind of stay away from them, you know? If you see a feature like that and you're like, hey, wow, what if they give it to me on the CCA lab? Here's what I would do. I, I, would, go to, uh, I would go to Google and I would say, I'd look for BGP table, it's actually what, what's called, it, it, you use a table map, and I'd say site www.groupstudy.com. And I would go to Google and search this feature, and I would see, okay, how many people talk about this feature on group study? Or in any, in any forum or mailing list. You may search forum.internetexpert.com, say site colon 
forum.internetexpert.com or site colon, you know, uh, some of the other forums that are out there and see how many CCI candidates discuss this topic. And, you know, you're going to probably see it pop up once or twice over the last three years or whatever. But you're not going to see it talk about a lot. So what's this going to say to you? Well, probably it's not being tested in the CCI lab. Why? Because things that are tested in the CCA lab, somebody's discussing it somewhere on some form, maybe not directly, but they're talking about the feature indirectly. Okay, and then that's the way you look on, you know, if you look on the mailing list, you, you can see what people talk about. You can see how important particular topics are. And I'll tell you a really good example, now we're talking about this, is route redistribution. On a scale of 1 to 10, where OSPF and BGP would be like a 9 or a 10, meaning that you better know it at, a, you know, at near you know, 1 to 10, uh, you know, that, that level, oh, route redistribution would be about a four. How many people do you see who, you know, who, who go on groups, they say, hey, I failed the CCA lab, I just don't know route redistribution. How many people you see post that? None. You know, I mean, it just doesn't happen. Route redistribution is a simple, not, it's not a simple topic. I mean, it can get really complicated, but from a real world perspective, how many people's networks come down because of route redistribution? Besides people preparing for the CCA, like CCA, really slim. How many people redistribute between RIP, OSPF, and EIGRP, and maybe BGP in the real world? Not that many. So because it's not a real world type of problem, it's really not a heavy emphasis in the CCA lab. Not, not to say that the CCA lab is always like that, but route redistribution is just pretty much a waste of time to be a 10 of 10 or 9 of 10 for route redistribution as far as knowledge goes. If you know it from a level, you know, just a basic level, you're pro you're, and you understand how it works, you're good to go for the CCA lab. You, you don't see a lot of top topics about route redistribution that are discussed on the forums, people preparing for the CCA lab. You know, because it's just not a, a very, you know, a, a common topic. But if you search for OSPF point to multipoint, or you search search for BGP aggregate address, or you know any you know common feature, you'll see a lot of people discussing it. Okay, so you know there's definitely a lot of resources out there. You know books are one of them, but one thing I recommend when you're reading books and you're going through the different books to prepare for the CCIA lab, you know make sure you don't read a 300-page book on multicast before you ever configured you know basic multicast. And of course, you know the preparation material that's out there. One thing you can, one thing like I said, you can get confused in that. You know, not confused, but you can end up with too much material. You can go to too many classes. You can you can go through too many different workbooks, and you're spending time. You know, you're spending time focusing on all these little. Hey, I went, I took this workbook, and they spent a whole a whole lot of time on, you know, uh, 3560 QoS. Then I went to the Zen Beds workbook and they really didn't spend a lot of time on 3560 QoS. So, you know, what should I expect in the real lab? Go to group study. See how many people search 3560 QoS site colon www.groupstudy.com. You'll see very, very few people talk about QoS for, for, you know, 3560. Why is that? Because, you know, as long as you know the basics, you're in, in the, and from a CCA lab perspective, they're just going to ask you. You know, they, they may ask you an advanced portion of QoS for IPv6, but more than likely, they'll be pretty impressed if you can interpret a question and then apply your knowledge, you know, something from pretty much a cookie cutter from the documentation CD. All right, I'm going to jump ahead real quick. We talked about books right here, uh, recommended reading for the CCA lab. There's a few of these books on our website. Uh, I highly recommend you look at a few of these. Um, the, this book right here, Internetworking with TCP IP, if you want to be an expert at TCP IP, if you, well, I should say, if you want to be an expert at IP, um, either be it TCP or UDP or OSPF over IP, what, it doesn't matter. Little my little pet peeve, people always call it TCP IP, but it's actually a lot of protocols. But if you want to be an expert at it, you should definitely pick up one of these two books and read it. It's by far better than any Cisco press book you can pick up on IP. Okay, you need to know IP from a vendor independent perspective. Don't look at a, a, a particular vendor slant on IP. One of these two books is definitely adequate. Either one, the difference between the Stevens book and the Colmer book, the Stevens book uses a lot of examples using the command line or examples from a Unix slash Linux box. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's written during the days of you know pure Unix. 
but you know, where Douglas Palmer 